to roll, to bend, to grasp, to fold, to split, to fire. Once Richard Serra wrote out a list of 47 verbs, things an artist could do with his hands to make art. And he did them to steal. I could go into a shipyard or to, to a steel mill and understand that a steel mill was nothing more than a big bakery that poured and rolled and cut and folded. And I could tell them, look, I want to use your bakery for my effect. Like these forged pieces, they don't make 40-ton cubes. Nobody does. Except Richard Serra. And he makes 80-ton torqued ellipses. Now, if you take a section of a lampshade or a flower pot, and let's say that you have a piece of steel like this. The dictionary steel, definition of torque like is, is a exactly turning right. or like twisting this. force. Imagine that twisting force applied to a geometric shape, in this case, an ellipse. An ellipse, say, 12 feet high, made out of solid steel two inches thick. That's what Richard Serra has been doing for the last couple of years. Really like the way it moves you around, you know, it's like a lot of body connection with this. It's the way it leans on you and moves away from you. And... Until January, nine of Richard Serra's pieces will be at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles. It's pretty amazing. I'm trying not to fall over. pieces fill a 55,000 square foot annex of the museum. But Sarah wants viewers to be aware of more than just their size. It, it, it's about space, I think, what he's doing, and, and uh, it's disorienting. Exactly right. They are about space, according to Sarah. Basically what space is for me, and it's really the substance of what I work with, and what I'm trying to do is control the volume of space to make you aware of how space functions differently. And what immediately becomes apparent is that there's an inner wall that's leaning away from you and a form that's leaning toward you, and that the space that you're walking in changes. It either gets narrower or it, it opens up as you come through. The space gets tighter um, and it gets more kind of compressed, and then it seems to open again and the wall seems to lead way out this leap wall seems toward you, light fall, fall, falls in, and you just turn to the left, and you enter a space. And for most people, this seems to be a great release. When you talk about it moving and rotating, it's still just standing still. How does it move? How do, how do we it, as... It moves as you move, and the pieces ask you to move. It's very difficult to locate. Outside the art world, Richard Serra is best known for his losing battle with the United States government in the 1980s over Tilted Ark, commissioned for Federal Plaza in New York City. The government paid for it, but then tore it down after Serra's sculpture got caught up in the politics of taste. This I consider an atrocity. I think it's ugly. It's a big rusty wall just standing there. I think it has absolutely no artistic merit. I think it was a big ripoff. Tilted Ark haters were star performers at public hearings in 1985 that made it to national television. Letting artists freely express themselves is a, a broad measure of our civilization. The fulfillment Defenders of the, of the piece, like artist George Siegel, outnumbered detractors, but they were ignored nearly 10 years after Tilted Ark was junked Sarah still believes he was used as a scapegoat. I thought that the way that the government treated me as a private individual was outrageous. I mean, completely outrageous. Complete disdain for me and my work. I, I thought it was offensive. Sarah's work has always been about changing our perception of time and space. In the mid-1970s, he made an unusual black and white film of a railroad turn bridge in Portland, Oregon. I thought if I took a camera out there, there was a way to film a sequence that it would allow me to show the bridge as a moving um, camera. That the bridge itself became this little mechanical toy that was filming itself and filming its environment. Moving a Richard Serra piece anywhere is a major feat. Is 
Imagine trucking all those tons of torqued ellipses cross country. Or floating 70 or so sections of the snake by river barge to the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain. Richard Serra is in the big leagues of contemporary art. That's not just a reference to the size of his pieces. Although at 104 feet long, the snake is pretty big. Makes you feel nervous that somehow he's... <laughs> The snake was one of the first works Guggenheim director Thomas Krenz bought for the new museum. 70, uh, you know, 30 ton plates look like they might fall over, but um, you know, it's about weight and scale and mass, and it's about those feelings of apprehension. If the snake is about weight, fulcrum outside the London Stock Exchange is about weightlessness. How five slabs of steel, 55 feet high, weighing 120 tons, can look fragile, like a house of cards. I'm not involved with tonnage for tonnage sake. I'm really involved with the sheer upward drive of that shaft that takes you from a placement on the ground where you walk into it to a vertical lift upward and outward to the sky. I'm really involved with how that space turns in that plaza and about why that piece is interesting. But if you think you know it from one side, you walk around. Richard Serra figures his choice of materials was inevitable. He put himself through college as a steel worker. His father worked in a shipyard. This lifelong familiarity with weight and mass is probably the reason Sarah is unfazed by what it takes to make and move and install his work. All of this means he identifies with the people who do the making and moving and installing. That's part of what I do. I don't consider it to be any different than what a lot of people do every day in relation to their profession. Sarah's respect survives even a bad day, as his torqued ellipses are being positioned for the Los Angeles show, one 40-ton section gets dropped. Oh. <laughs> they need more weight on the back. These people, half the time, got their life on the line for what You're I do. You're exactly right. And You're I'm not right. saying that in some sort of, like, romantic, facetious way. When you're moving big material around, the potential for material to overturn is always apparent. And I'm not interested in, you know, the threat of all of that, but I admire the people. I, I, I admire riggers and iron workers and truckers. They always get it, Sarah says, about how his work crews react to his art. They do what Richard Sarah wants everybody to do, bring their own experiences to his work. The content of the pieces is really determined by the viewer. The subject of these pieces is the viewer. You're the subject matter of these pieces. To enclose, to surround, to encircle, to modulate, to distill. Going back to Richard Serra's list of things he does to make art, the last one is the philosophical one, to continue.